two third and twos and a third and three. Were you surprised that on every situation they threw? Yeah, I really hadn't thought about that. You know, I didn't know it was two third and twos and a third and three. I mean, you know, if you're not running the ball well, you've got to be willing to throw it. Uh, they certainly do it well. And, um, they've got a good football team. You know, they didn't have their, 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 their back. And I saw him before the game. He's a really good player. So I hate that for them. But uh, when you're struggling to run it, sometimes you got to do other things. And that's not really for me to judge. We just got to stop them. What does that say about your defensive front to be able to hold them to 137? <clears throat> Says they strike, they knock people back. You got to do more of it. You got to play with toughness. We tackled better. Um, we're wrapped up. We didn't seem to give up the extra yardage that we gave up on Kentucky several times. And uh, the kids worked hard. We tried to simplify the game plan because of how much they did. You know, and I think Coach Sherry, Coach Rocker helped with that because they played Auburn really well the last two years. And they played well defensively against Auburn. So we share ideas sometimes across the board, but those guys did a good job. How important was it for the offense to be able to eat the clock in the fourth quarter to essentially take the game out of Auburn's hands? That was huge. I just so bad wanted to cash in on that, 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 that touchdown to give a little bit of breathing room right there. We've got to get to run the red area. We can get those, those balls in the end zone. But the time they chewed up, forcing them to call their timeouts, I mean, really that's the difference in the game. Because when they go out in two minutes, they can't, they can't stop the clock. Coach, um, what is the potential of this defense right now? I know a lot of people say that they're young, but they just – held a team that normally averages over 40 points a game to seven points. Where can they move forward? Where can they improve? Well, they held a team that didn't have their start back. Let's, let's preface it with that. Do I love the way our kids played? Absolutely. But it's about players in this league. And those kids played hard. No first downs in the second half. I didn't even realize that. You know, until I walked mean? off the field. I'm proud of the way they played. But we, we can get better. We can show improvement. And uh, we've got to continue to do that. I'm, I'm proud of the way they competed. Those guys, I mean, they, they knew they could be physical. They knew that team was physical. We challenged them all week. Oh, we've got a physical team. But so are we. So they were able to go out and respond to it. So Kirby, uh, Sean White comes in in this game. I think the SEC's most Ooh. efficient passer. You guys hold him to 30%. Um, get, is there anything specific you feel like you guys did well to do that? We so executed. I mean, I'll be honest with you, there probably wasn't a call in that game that we had not called in the past on Auburn. There wasn't a play they ran. They haven't run in the past. So it's not about tricks, gimmicks, and schemes. It's about guys executing. And to be honest, I thought Coach Tucker, at the end of the day, sometimes you hit them, you hit them right, he hit them right. He calls some good calls today. He calls some good pressures. He calls some good coverages. He called a good game. The kids executed it. Can believe in it. Can you explain the reasoning behind the two trick plays have the goal line? <laughs> yeah. The, the first one's on me. The first one, I've been wanting to call that all year with Terry because I, I, I know what defenses do. They check. And they, they, they go all out to stop Terry there. And I watched Terry growing up. I've seen him throw the ball. I, I watched that play on our offense. I mean, our defense. They scored twice in that play against us in practice. So the first one I just thought was going to be there. I thought all week. So I told Coach Chang I wanted. He agreed. We went with it. Terry just made a pretty bad decision there. You know, Terry could have thrown the ball out of bounds, kicked the field goal, and he go play. He knows it. Um, but then the last one was it wasn't really so much of a trick play as much as it was we thought the play was going to work. It's been seven for seven in college football this year. Because people scored on it. Everybody does it. It's a, it's a direct play where nobody covers the quarterback. They didn't cover him. The ball floated a little too much. And I thought it was an aggressive call. We were going to win the game. You know what I mean? You want to run the ball third, fourth, go? No, we want, we want to find a way to get it in. And we thought the kid, 6'6", six, six, go up and get it. And their guy made a good play. He did not get it. That seemed like about the only thing that we had. <laughs> he did he right just He got popped pretty hard on that play. I said, I was going to say, it seemed like about the only thing that didn't go his way tonight. Well, he played I, pretty well. He did play well. I give the credit where the credit's due. He's getting better. We can't take sacks and field goal range. We gotta get rid of the ball, make good decisions. Uh, and he's improved. He's gotta continue to improve. Um, but that that play, I still think that he makes it the next time he goes up strong with his hands. Coach, you said yourself Auburn had one of the best defensive lines you've seen. Yeah. So we run, it seemed like you guys were running more toss sweeps to kind of was it to stay away from I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> one Three, five, the single digit line. <laughs> they, they, they're big now, and they come off the ball hard. They play physical, and um, you know I thought we did some things to try to confuse them today, and it helped us get some uh, easier plays, you know. But hey, it's, it's it's hard sledding up in there. If you don't do it at all, it's hard to keep them honest. Perfect. From honest. from late last week, with your back against the wall, to what happened today, do you sense sort of a foundational change maybe with the, the guys on this team moving 
Well, I, I think I like I opened with an opening statement. I think that we're constantly in pursuit of improvement and, and getting to a certain place to a standard. And that doesn't change based on outcomes. It doesn't change. I know for y'all it changes based on outcomes, but that's the SEC. Welcome to the SEC. Every game is going to be tight. Every game's close outside of one team that's, that, that, that's an outlier right now. But the rest of them, they're tight, guys. And, and they're tough games. They're physical games. And I think our kids are getting more and more confident in, in believing in that, that a close game we're going to win. Kirby, though, from a momentum standpoint, does it need a win like this do for those guys? Oh, it does wonders for the, the program, the university, the recruiting. And I'm going to be talking to y'all. I want to go see those guys. You know, and um, I think that's a, that's a, that's a big part. Uh, it gives our kids something they can hang their hat on and say, hey, look, if we do this right, what coach is saying is true. I believe in it. We had a, a, a great speaker come in, a Navy SEAL guy that came in, 26 year captain of Navy SEALs that spoke to the team. I thought he did an awesome job. He grabbed their attention. It was a change up from me being boring, and, and he did an awesome job. And he talked about being relevant. What is your relevance? And how do you become relevant? It's not go out and eat Auburn. It's how do, how do, what, what's my relevance in this game? How am I going to affect this game? Is it covering a kick? Is it affecting a player that's got to go in the game because I'm not going to play? And everybody's got to find their relevance. In, 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 thought that a lot of our kids try to do that by affecting each other. You mentioned uh, holding them without a first down in the second half. Just how big is that for you, given that in some pretty good defensive performances in the past, there were some times where you weren't able to get off the field in those situations? I don't really understand your question. Better, <laughs> third better, better third down efficiency? How does it make me feel? I'm happy for the defense. I'm happy for the kids because they're the ones who did it. I didn't have anything to do with those guys stopping them. You know what I mean? The, the, the reason we stopped them a lot was because we were on the sideline drinking Gatorade for a lot of those minutes resting because of what the offense did. You know, because Bryce Ramsey went out there and hit some balls inside the 20. And he got one he'd like to have back, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Michael Parrish, uh, he's a guy that nobody really talks about. You don't even talk about much. I mean, DeAndre Baker's kind of been the guy everybody's talking about the last few weeks with him getting snaps. It seems like teams don't really attack him very much. They don't try to go after him. He's a solid tackler. Does makes the special teams play. What you know? How have you seen him kind of grow up this year? And and, and just kind of talk about the plays he's been making. Baker, Malcolm, Malcolm Perry. Okay, Malcolm. Yeah. Um, well, Malcolm's had ups and downs, like all of us. You can go back. Everybody's criticizing Ole Miss. You know, he gets beat a couple times. He never stopped working. He just kept competing. He kept fighting. You know, we made a change there, and then. Made another change, and he came back in the line. It just goes to show that we're going to value practice. It's important. How you do it in practice dictates the game, and he did better in practice. So he got to play. He's a good physical tackler. Um, he works hard. It's important to Malcolm. He's one of the guys in the leadership group that I know is always going to be honest with me. So I've been really proud of the way he's competed and the way he tackles and the way he goes about business in practice. And if you do that right, you've got a chance to be successful. Last question. question. Kirby, how was your coaching kind of – your coaching identity evolved this season? Well, I think I'm getting more and more comfortable um, with game time stuff, with game time decisions. I think that comes through time. I mean, uh, for me, it's just kind of always been in that thought process anyway. What do you do here? What do you do there? And trying to think one step ahead all the time to uh, whether it's conserving timeouts, making decisions on whether to kneel the ball or running. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that goes into that. And uh, that's the part that I'm probably involved in most. Where you want to be? No, never where we want to be. Where we want to be, we've arrived, and nobody's arrived. Thank you, guys. Go dogs. Go dogs.